My name is Prasoon Devan, and this is a tutorial on atmosphere I've created for my students. Most of these slides have been made by Brendan Broadfoot, and uh, most of this information came from conversations with Calvin McLean of Cybers. So this video was created uh, by recording a, a PowerPoint presentation I made, which is a great feature in PowerPoint. But unfortunately, it doesn't work well sometimes, uh, especially when your deck has uh, a lot of images. Um, while recording, it seems that PowerPoint has trouble keeping the loading of the uh, images and your recording in sync, which in turn means that at the start of a slide, you'll often hear my voice clipped. And at the end of the slide, you would hear a long pause or a pause equal to the portion that it clipped. I've tried to fix the problem in a few slides when it was uh, glaring, um, but in some form it exists in almost every slide. Um, this is the PDF of the PowerPoint I used. Um, the PowerPoint has several URLs, so you can uh, use the PDF to directly navigate to those URLs. And this is the PowerPoint uh, deck where the slides are. And just in case these URLs get um, moved, uh, search for unique words in this presentation, which should take you at least to the PDF. So using Atmosphere is involved. It has many steps. And you need to start with this particular page, which is the Atmosphere page. Scroll down and click on User Management Portal. Take you to a form that is straightforward to fill. And once you fill it and submit it, you have a Cybers account. Now you need access to Atmosphere. So your page and now go to the request access to Atmosphere link and do another page, click on user management. Now click on Cybers login, which you already have now, request access. And at this point, you need to give a reason for getting access to Atmosphere. If you're in my class, you might want to fill this information that Brennan filled in give your reasons, mention the name of the instructor, the email address, the class name, and register your request. Once the request is received, you will see on the, on the next screen that your request is pending. And once the request gets fulfilled, pending will, go, will get replaced with uh, a link that says go to atmosphere. Now this may take time because I believe a human being has to actually go and approve this. So you don't want to keep sitting there and refreshing your page. You will get an email notification. So wait for that. And uh, once you get that, go back again to the links that uh, are embedded in the email and, and you, you're all set with um, Atmosphere Access. Your next task is to actually create an Atmosphere instance, which is really a computer in the cloud. So you should go and uh, go back to the Atmosphere page and click on Launch Atmosphere. Now, when you create this computer in the cloud, you need some preloaded op uh, software. You need an operating system. You need some software on top of that. So together, the uh, operating system and the loaded software form an image. And there are many images. And for my course, you need a, need a Java image. So in, image in the image search box, you can in general enter any tags. And uh, here we've entered the tag Java, which will give us two uh, images. And you want to take the top image, which is the one that Calvin created for us. And by clicking on it, you go uh, to that image. Each image has a URL. So you see the URL on the top of this page here. And if you enter this URL directly, you are taken directly to the image. You don't have to go through the search box. Okay. So now you should go and log in and point. Atmosphere will ask you to put your new instance in a project. A project can have multiple instances. You can have multiple projects. And so you'll be asked to enter information about the project in which you want to put this image. And this is what Brennan put in. And now your image is being, your instance is being created. That takes time. Even though this is automatic, it'll be a while. So you don't want to just sit there and keep refreshing. If you do so, at some point, 
if all goes well, your status will be active and you will get an IP address. So now you have a computer connected to the internet, uh, but you should really just wait for the email. Um, and, and this can take time. It can take a few hours too. Uh, so, um, so uh, you, and in the email, you will have your username, um, which, you, which you gave it, and you'll have the IP address of the computer. So we now have an instance and uh, with preloaded software. And what you might want to do is load some software of your own. So if you're doing my course, you've, got, you've, you've written Java programs and you need to um, load them as jar files. So let's look at uh, what it takes to create the jar file and then we'll go and look at the gen general idea of how to transfer files to an instance. So if you're in my course, you've been using, or if you're using Java, you're probably uh, using Eclipse. So uh, select the project, right click, and you will get this, uh, this menu in which you have the option to export. So that option, uh, go to the Java, Java item, and within it, you want to export a runnable jar file. A runnable jar file is a jar file that identifies the main class so that uh, you can directly execute the class. A project can have multiple mains and you should have already run the main classes that you want uh, locally in Eclipse, uh, which you want, uh, that you want later to be running in, in, in Atmosphere. So uh, if you've already run these locally, you have launch configurations for each main. So if, you, if you're doing the distributed course with me, you've got a server um, a configuration, you've got a client configuration, so you need to go and create jars for each one of them because each one of them is a separate main class. Select the configuration here and export your jar uh, once for the client, once for the server. Next task is to transfer these jars to the instance. So we need to know how to transfer files to instances. Atmosphere has a whole page on how to do this. You can transfer files from your Cybers cloud storage or you can transfer files from your uh, home computer. So in our, in our course, we, we, we are going to export, the, uh, we are going to uh, upload the files that we exported. So they are on your, on your local computer, so that's the option we want to take. Um, there are some GUI tools to do so, but we are just going to look at uh, a text tool, SFTP. So that's a protocol and um, on each instance, there's, some server, there's a server that runs this protocol and uh, you need a client that, that, that talks this protocol. And uh, one, one client that you might want to use, the one I use is the Git Bash uh, tool. If you haven't downloaded it, you might want to do so. Um, Git, you, you're, you, if you're doing my course, you've got, a, uh, you've got a Git repository you're using and you can manipulate that using Eclipse, but it's, it's advantages to also have this Git Bash tool to interact with it. So uh, Git Bash is uh, also an SFTP client, and uh, you you want to change the directory here uh, to the uh, one in which you have um, exported the jar files, so that you don't have to uh, mess with SFTP to do so. So once you've done that, this picture shows you how to use SFTP. You you have an instance. So you, have, you must name that instance, plus you must name, give your name, um, the, your cyber's name, uh, separate with an at sign, and then it'll ask you for a password. And once you're connected to SFTP, you'd use the put command to put your local files in the remote instance. Okay, so here Brennan has put the client.jar file, and then he's put the server.jar file. And if you want the image files or other files that these jars access, uh, to be also on that instance, uh, you should put all of them too. So we have now our instance that is usable. It's got the um, data we need. And now we need to interact with it. So this instance is in the cloud, doesn't have a screen or keyboard. The screen and keyboard would have to be your local computer. So you need some client on your local computer talking to some server on your instance that will, um, that will process those, uh, th those interactions. The instance has an SSH server. 
you need an SSH client to which you give the IP address. And uh, on Windows, you can just use secure SCRT. And uh, once, once you enter this address and hit return, uh, it'll ask you for the cybers log, login name and password, and you can enter those. And then you have uh, an SSH session. And you, here, Brennan has created two SSH sessions to the same instance, one running the server, one running the client. And you can see what he did here. Uh, since this was a Java program, he executed the Java command, told the Java command which jar file to process. He did not have to tell what main class to use because that was burnt into the jar file. And this is the one he ran for server. This is the one that he ran for the client. And the client produced a bunch of, uh, bunch of output lines, so you can't see the command there. Okay. Now, if you're in my course, these Java programs actually uh, create user interfaces. And uh, and this and we're using a text text uh, shell here. So what happens to the GUIs? Um, if you run a, a, a Java program that creates a GUI, um, the shell expects you to have an X server running on your computer. And if you're running Windows, you don't have an X server. If you're running Mac, I believe you do. Uh, but let's not rely on uh, an X server being on your computer. So. If you're using my, uh, my, uh, my GUI library, the library is smart enough to know that it's running headless, which means there's no uh, way to create a GUI. So it just doesn't create the GUI. Okay? And, if, and again, in my course, uh, your programs do allow uh, textual input and output. So this is what Brennan has done. He's just uh, looking at the textual output and providing textual input to it. Okay? So that's how you interact headless with the programs. And if your program doesn't create a GUI, that's all you need. If your program does create a GUI and you want to see the view the GUI, you need to use something different. In each instance, that's called VNC server. So you need a VNC client and on Windows or on Mac, I believe it's, it's the VNC viewer that, that, that this client is called. So search in the web for this VNC viewer, download it, run it. When you run it, this is the UI you'll get. You'll have to enter the IP address of the instance, and you have to. And you can have multiple VNC servers running on an instance. You have to tell uh, tell the client which server to take, and and so you have to give a port number. And in this case, the port number is one. So that's what you do. You say um, IP address colon one. Okay. You'll be asked to again enter your cybers uh, login name and password. You get your remote desktop. And uh, it'll give you an option to, about the configuration to use. So just say default configuration. And, uh, and that'll give you a way to launch a, a shell. And this shell will run locally in that instance. Okay. And so it's not, uh, uh, it's not your secure CRT client talking to a server. It's just running right there. But the commands it follows are the same as your, uh, as your remote shell did. And so, as your remote shell follows, and so again, Brennan, what he's done is said Java minus jar server dot jar, but now this one is being executed directly on uh, on the instance, and creates now this GUI. Okay. And again, what Brennan has done is created two of these um, uh, terminal emulators on the same instance, and in one of the terminal emulators, he's got the server running, in the other, he's got the client running. And uh, you have the same situation as you had with two shells running um, on your local computer, but you also have, but difference is that you also have a GUI displayed. Okay. Now, creating both the client and server on one instance is not that interesting because you could have done that on your local computer also. What's more interesting is to create the different parts of your distributed program on different instances. And that's what Brennan has done. And he's used the VNC viewer here to talk to all of them, all of these instances. So VNC viewer will cache the instances to which you've talked earlier, and you can just click on one of these icons to go to the right uh, instance. And you can see your instances by going to the projects tab um, in the atmosphere page, and that lists all your, all your instances. And you can see here that uh, some of these instances are suspended, some are active. So each instance is a computer, it takes resources that somebody else could be using. So you want to conserve them. 
Okay, so what I've done is I've suspended the, the instances I'm not currently using. Um, and if you don't suspend your instances um, and run out of your quota, uh, then Atmosphere will automatically suspend them. And that you don't want to happen because then it takes for a while for you to build your quota again. It's like using up all your calling minutes and you need time to get your new calling minutes. So you want to explicitly suspend an instance if you're not using it. Okay, to do so, just click on the instance uh, and click on the instance uh, URL and you have a bunch of options. Use the suspend option. Okay. And now your instance after some time will, will, will get suspended and uh, and now you want to unsuspend it and when you unsuspend it, you get a new IP address because the suspended um, instances, as you see, uh, do not have uh, IP addresses. Okay. Deactivate, click on it and say resume. Okay. Uh, you could have deleted your instance and created a new instance, but that takes more time. And more important, your, um, your files are lost, your uploaded files are lost because you're creating a new instance. So with res by resuming it, you sh should still have access to your uploaded files. But be careful. You have to be careful though. Um, I've had trouble um, resuming instances I and I've got a deployment error once. And in this example here, uh, even after about 12 hours, it hasn't uh, unsuspended and it says it's networking and I suspect it's not going to, it's hanging. So, um, so, so since there is that risk, uh, make sure that if you have any files that have been modified in the instance, uh, then before suspending it, be sure to download them to either the Cybers cloud or to your local computer. Okay, so um, that's the basic um, way to interact with instances. Um, one issue that arises with the scarcity of instances, the fact that instances uh, take up resources, is how to share an instance among multiple users. Okay, so you might create an instance, your fellow student might create an instance, and each of you might want to use not only your instance, but your friend's instance also. Okay, so you want shared atmosphere instances. Uh, here's a URL that tells you exactly what to do to create a shared instance. And, uh, here I've followed the instructions. So um, if you're gonna share an instance, you need to add a new user to your instance. Okay, you want to do that in the administrator or the or the or the uh, root mode. Uh, and, uh, and Ubuntu has this command sudo, um, and just type it as as it's being typed here. And once you enter the correct password, uh, use some text editor. I'm using VI. I think uh, you, you also have access to Vim. Um, use some editor to edit this file as slash etc slash group. Okay. That file, look for the entry, uh, the line beginning with users. Uh, it should have your user by default, a username by default. Add to it uh, the name of your uh, collaborator and uh, save the file and uh, then exit uh, from the administrator mode. And now that user uh, can use SSH to interact with that instance. If the user, if, the, if your friend wants to use VNC, it's a bit more involved. So as we saw earlier, to create a GUI, uh, you need uh, access to a VNC server. Um, each instance does come with a VNC server, but that's for the user who owns that instance. Each other user must enter the VNC server command, and uh, that command will tell you the port number uh, that stands for that server. So use that port number um, along with the instance name to interact with the, uh, with the VNC server. Okay. And then, then the interaction is much as before. VNC server is a daemon process. That means if you kill the shell from which you started it, the VNC server will still remain so that VNC clients can keep talking to it. So if you want to get rid of the VNC server you created, um, execute the VNC server minus kill command uh, telling it which port number to use. So that's uh, that's the discussion of Atmosphere. And uh, if you want more, uh, if you want other information or more information, you can look at the official uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube videos created uh, for Atmosphere by just going to YouTube and searching for these for Atmosphere iPlant. And of course, there's textual documentation on it.